it's pretty straightforward to use this tool, but there are a few things to keep in mind for best results. So here I have some test footage. It's uh, the number changes for each frame, but here at 10, there's a couple repeated frames which are marked with this X, and then again at 20, there's a few repeated frames here, and then at 30, there's a few rep uh, repeated frames again. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind here is that this work area is set to 49 frames. Uh, it says 42 because of the duplicated frames. So, um, so yeah, so the, uh, the, 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 the two really important things are, what do you set the threshold and what do you do with this region of interest? So if your footage is digitally created, so for example, this, I created this in After Effects, or let's say you did some capture of some gameplay, which is all computer generated, so there's no noise, uh, then you are going to want to set the threshold to zero. The, the threshold basically allows for a little bit of change uh, even and then still determine that it's a duplicate frame. So for the most classic examples, you have some video that was recorded with a video camera that has a little bit of noise or compression or something. So the threshold would allow for the compression noise, but still, you know, determine that a frame is a duplicate. But in this case, there's zero noise, so I'm just going to set the threshold to zero. And then the other thing you're going to want to do is always use the region of interest if uh, for best results. So assuming that you can always focus some area of the of the footage where there's always going to be evident where there's changes in the frames or the or no changes to determine the duplicate frames. So first you check it out and then you want to create the region of interest layer. You have to select the the layer that you're going to be uh, scanning. So then once it creates this effect, you just select the effect and you kind of move move this circle uh, where you want it to be. The height is locked to the width, so you just have to set the width and the position. The smaller the region of interest, the faster it's going to process and the more accurate results you're going to get. So make this as small as necessary. Uh, so as you can see here, one important thing to note is that the X is outside of the region, so even though this is a change here, it would uh, not record it. So hopefully if all goes well, um, we're going to now have a clip without the X duplicate frames. So now I'm going to go ahead and do it. It's going to say, ah, you need to select the, the footage layer that you're going to be scanning. So I said, okay. So I uh, said, yeah. So you got the info panel up there and you saw the, the um, progress bar. And um, let's not delete the regis, uh, uh, region of interest. But now you can see that we have now removed those duplicate frames. Now the problem is that now my clip is uh, 40 frames long as opposed to the 49 or whatever that it was. So if you wanted to then retime back to the original footage, let's go ahead and undo that. And we'll do retime to original length. And then you can tell it what basically what blending you want it to use. So you can have it do no blending, frame mix, or pixel motion. <clears throat> um, so in this case, I'll just do, say, I don't know, frame mix. Um, so here, obviously, it's going to stretch it back out. So you're going to have some weird dissolve frames between. You can always change this afterwards. So why don't we just go ahead and, and process this. <clears throat> so notice that I didn't have to redo the region of interest layer because it's already there. Okay, so now I'm going to say yes, delete this region of interest layer. Okay, so now let's go see what happens here at 10. Um, you can see now we're back to the, uh, you know, 49 frames and all our footage is, oh, it looks like it, uh, ah, this might not be a, uh, let's see, a perfect example because it's a pre-comp if I had rendered the, uh, so it's actually looking at the source footage when it's doing this. But if it was actually footage, it would just then retime this out uh, using the, ra the time remapping. Uh, so maybe this was not the best demo. But anyway, uh, the way you change whether you're going to uh, frame mix or pixel motion is this uh, uh, <coughs> frame blending. Oh, you know, <laughs> sorry. 
Um, again, this is a um, pre-comp, so it doesn't actually have correct frame blending. So really should have used the piece of footage, but you would just click here under the frame blending. <coughs> you would be able to switch between frame mix, pixel motion, or no blending, and it would give it to you. So that's it. This is how you use the tool. Hope you guys find it useful.